World building is important, especially if you're writing a story that doesn't take place in the actual world. World building is one of the many things that can carry a story. For example, the whole Harry Potter series is carried by J.K. Rowling's world building. Just about every time something comes up, the mood is lightened or changed by a new description or a new revelation about the world that Rowling has created. In fact, world building is the reason why Pottermore exists. Um, but world building is also very complicated and you have to be careful to not create things that contradict each other. Um, a lot of people hate world building. I love it because I'm a huge nerd. Um, I love the idea of something so completely different. It's why I love learning other languages because the grammar is completely different and it reveals a whole new way of thinking about language. Well, world building is much the same way. It's a whole new possibility, whether it's magical or fantasy or science fiction or what. Um, I was searching for uh, world building resources and I really only found one, um, which is very disappointing. Uh, just Google world building, pretty much. And I came up with this, uh, what came up was 30 days of world building. Um, which apparently you can download in PDF, EPUB, and Mobi form. Um, it's actually really cool looking. Um, it's just like, oh, just do one of these like 15 minutes a day and then you'll mostly have your world building done. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about world building in the different types of stories I've written. Um, first one, historical. A lot of people don't think that you really world build with historical because um, with historical everything's already happened, but that isn't true because you can totally pick a made up place and put it in a historical setting, okay? Um, I didn't do that. Uh, what I did was I looked up abandoned airports, um, and so then I found this place in New York State with an abandoned airfield, and I was like, that place, that place is going to be where my story is set. But on top of that, you do have a lot of research, and you get a bit of picking and choosing as to what, um, as to what you're going to use. Are you going to do the whole poodle skirts, because it's the 50s, or are you like just gonna ignore that um and um i guess oh, that isn't quite it mm. another thing with that is language one thing that really helps me with my historical stuff is when i'm not sure if they would have used a word back then i go to etim online which is an online etymological dictionary it does not come up with everything, but it is far more useful than the dictionary. The reason it's more useful than the dictionary on um, my online dictionary is Merriam-Webster. Um, the reason is because Merriam-Webster only says when a word came into use. It doesn't say which meanings of a word and when they came into use, but Etim Online does. Um, so then another thing, another story that I've done world building for was my werewolf story. Um, and this one's a bit more, um, urban fantasy. Um, it's urban fantasy in that it's used the regular real world and then there's this sort of separate world that not a lot of people know about, similar to Harry Potter. Um, uh, that one was, that one was so much fun to do. I had to decide how many packs I was going to have in the world and then I was had to decide where they were going to be, so I was looking up kind of big cities, but also sort of obscure places. Um, and on top of that, I had to create reasons for why there were that number of packs. I had to create um, rules for forming new packs, and um, all 
and to create conflicts, not just uh, family conflicts, but international conflicts, international rules. Um, and then another one was um, Extinct, which is sort of urban fantasy. The thing is, it's in a vague era in the future. Uh, it's set very similarly to modern times, but in actuality, it's in the future. But um, there isn't much that's futuristic because it has an alternate history. So because it has an alternate history, I had to explain that alternate history, and I'm constantly pointing out how that alternate history has changed um, the future and the settings of that world. Um, so that was that was really fun to decide. I, um, you know, the EU how it's uh, mostly an economic, um, an economic thing. Well, um, I also decided to have that be created for other continents, and um, and then there was also a universal currency and all of this other stuff. It was so much fun, and then I'd always think of new things, and then like, yes, this is great, but it, it's always good to have at least a skeleton of your world before you actually start writing, or at least before you start editing, because some people like to finish it before they start writing, and some people just write and go, and then they have it figured out by the end of the book. That's okay, but when you're going through and editing, you have to pay more attention, so um, it's better to have a place where you have everything written down, to have a place where you can go back and check on things and be like, yeah, this is how it works, or no, I can't do this cool idea because it contradicts this thing that I really need. Um, don't forget that world building is extremely important because it has to factor in to the plot. DFTBA, see you guys next week.